I've shown from the start that I like to be ambitious. The figures I've achieved are fantastic. I'm very proud of them. It was an incredible experience. Winning the World Cup for your country is as good as it gets. I haven't seen a player with that precision and quality, with both feet. He wanted to win, he wanted perfection every hour of every working day. In major tournaments, he always ended up as the top goal scorer or key player. Spain's top scorer, World Cup and European champion. Some of the world's best strikers have come from Spain. None more so than David Villa. Yet his rise to become the nation's greatest goal scorer almost never began. I was four years old and it was my first year at school. An older boy fell on me and I broke my leg. I was in hospital for six months. One of the things that you do learn is that his father was a great um, guide in his life. His father pushed him and therefore David Villa took the challenge and perfected how he could play on what was his weaker leg, the left leg. Players from Astorius are very professional and honourable. El Guaje was a combination of all of that. He was a player who always wanted to improve and give more. Villa became a rare footballing breed, a striker deadly with both feet. And it wasn't long before El Guaje, a.k.a. the kid, started gaining recognition after joining Sporting Gijón in 1999. You realise at Sporting Gijón that he was, a, he was a different striker. He was a goal scorer at a time where there weren't many Spanish goal scorers around. I have great memories as it was my first stint as a professional footballer. I made my professional debut for the team I supported as a boy. I'm glad I could enjoy those years so much. 38 goals in two seasons in the second division suggested Villa had potential. Then came a move to Real Zaragoza, where he proved he was something special among Spain's elite. To score 17 La Liga goals in that Zaragoza side, even under the auspices of a clever coach, Victor Munoz, who was at his very best then, I think he was what we call here in Spain, revelación. This is a different breed of goal scorer. This is a guy that does it regularly, um, has got an instinct for it. Is he the fastest? No. Uh, is he the, 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 the most technically gifted player? No, but he's there. Zaragoza gave me the chance to play in La Liga. Sporting sold me because they needed the money, as the club was experiencing some financial difficulties. It was wonderful to score so many goals in my debut season in Spain's top division. Villa's first season at Zaragoza also saw him secure his first piece of silverware. That team that Zaragoza and David Villa beat was jam-packed full of some of the best talents any of us will ever see during our lives. Villa, apart from his goal, dragged Real Madrid players left, right and central until Real Madrid couldn't cope. It was amazing to watch David Villa in action. 
His movement in the box was always wonderful. He had an incredible work ethic beyond just his eye for the goal. I was delighted. It was my first trophy at Real Zaragoza. That match was amazing because we managed to beat a great Real Madrid side. The whole team was thrilled to come away with the victory. Villa's performance in that 3-2 victory against Real's Galacticos suddenly saw Europe's biggest clubs come after him. When Rafa Benitez signed for Liverpool, the first player he wanted to take from Spain was David Villa. They couldn't do the deal, Valencia got him. And Liverpool's loss was very much Valencia's gain. He burst onto the scene and surprised everyone. 25 goals in 35 games. It was the best goal tally for a goal scorer of Valencia in 60 years. 60 years, so and this is a club that in that period has been fighting for titles. It was all about his movement. If you gave a player like him two centimetres, he'd find the net. Watching him train, you could see that he was a natural goal scorer. He lived to score. He was always in the right place, which the team benefited from. In his first campaign at the Mestalla, the striker won the Spanish Player of the Year after his goals helped the team return to the Champions League. And of the 25 league goals, there was one in particular that caught everyone's eye. He had two things to his game, goals and excellent shooting, which allowed him to try his luck from distance. It's the furthest I've scored from, the only goal I've scored from near the halfway line. He had a habit of getting his shot away very quickly and producing breathtaking quality. We managed to win that game 1-0. Deportivo were a very strong side at the time. It's a goal I'll always remember. Three goals in four matches at his first World Cup finals in 2006 enhanced Villa's reputation as one of the best finishers in the game. As did ending Valencia's top goal scorer in each of his first three seasons. Yet not everyone was happy with the striker's inclusion ahead of Spain's leading marksman Raúl going into Euro 2008. There was a famous incident where at Malaga train station, as Spain arrived to play a friendly at the Rosaleda, there was an ambush of people protesting that Raúl needed to be returned to the team. He used to say, I haven't done anything to be compared with someone else to be criticised for something I didn't do. Raúl was a leader, and David Villa wasn't a leader as such, but uh, he was the guy that would score the goal when we needed it most. Aragonés saw David Villa in the same category as Iniesta, David Silva, Xavi. Small, slight, but brilliantly mobile, football intelligent, and the future. The early signs were positive. Four goals from Villa during the group stage saw Spain top their group with three wins out of three. They'd then beat Italy on penalties before overcoming Russia 3-0 to reach their first major final since 1984. Yet for Villa, that semi-final victory would prove bittersweet. When I got injured, I knew I was out of the final, but I accepted it and tried to help the team in a different way. I'd have liked to have played, but I wasn't upset. I helped the team get there. So yes, I couldn't play, but the most important thing was a teammate came in for me and did a good job. We've always had great players and fantastic sides, but we've never managed to win any major tournaments. We achieved something really important for Spain. We put Spanish football up there for having won a European championship. I was so happy. After receiving the golden boots, Villa proved at Euro 2008 that Luis Aragonés was right. Spain's future was in safe hands. In the major tournaments, David would always end up as the top goal scorer or key player. 
There's not much more you can add to that. Having won and flown back, they can go wild. And they do. They party all night. The last two guys to come out of the club and walk home are Aguaje and Emilio, Torres and Villa, wandering home at five in the morning from the club, the half kilometre to the Spain team hotel. Not arm in arm, but two buddies who just conquered Europe. In the summer of 2010, after 107 league goals in 166 games for Valencia, Villa completed a move to Barcelona for 40 million euros. I always hoped I'd play for Barcelona. It's a team I really liked when I was young because they had lots of players that I admired, like Luis Enrique, Abelardo, Kini. They were from the same area as me and had played for Sporting Gijón before enjoying lots of success at Barcelona. Barca were looking to build an even stronger side and having a player like David Vier in the team would be a boost, not just in La Liga, but also in the Champions League. Of course, playing for a team like Barcelona isn't the same as playing for other clubs. But having David in the team was essential for us. Before Villa's new chapter at the new Camp could begin, however, there was the task of helping Spain create history by winning their first ever World Cup. But the European champions suffered a shock 1-0 opening match defeat versus Switzerland. The ball didn't want to go in and we lost. We then knew we needed to win the following six matches to be world champions. Then came Villa to the rescue. Three goals in two games helped Spain progress to the knockout stage before crucial winners against Portugal and Paraguay put Spain into the last four. No team can be successful if their link-up play is very good, but they don't have anyone to finish off the chances. David's a reliable finisher in front of goal, whether it's his left foot, right foot or his head. Once the goal started coming in and the victory started coming in and then, uh, you know, the, 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 the game against Paraguay, we, we could have lost but we didn't. Uh, a lot of things went our direction and, of course, the, uh, the, the famous uh, Puyol goal in the, in the semi-finals of the, of the World Cup. All of that meant that uh, the belief just kept growing and once we were in that final against, against Netherlands, it was like, nobody's going to beat us now. It was very tough. The Netherlands made it really difficult for us, which wasn't a surprise. They tried everything to stop us playing our game. After a physically gruelling 90 minutes, neither side managed to break the deadlock. Then in extra time, up stepped Andres Iniesta. Even now, whenever I see it, I feel very happy and emotional. It's a moment that will go down in history, forever, for all of us. The game was very even until Andres scored. Thank God we managed to win it. At the time, what we were saying, and it still feels like that, um, we won't realise what we've done, what they've done, um, until years later, when you're thinking about it. It was, it was just absolutely magical. David gave us a lot. Not only the goals to make the difference, but also during the game itself. And he did pretty well. He scored in almost every match. And for us, that was so important. It was the happiest day of my career. I've been involved in millions of beautiful moments in this sport. But winning the World Cup for your country is as good as it gets. Villa again finished a major tournament as Spain's top scorer. Yet things would start to get a whole lot harder for the World Cup winner back at his new club. This was the, the most crucial part of the David Villa story. So he came to Barcelona, having missed on the opportunity to go to Real Madrid. He was close to go to Real Madrid, it didn't happen. Went to Barcelona and uh, once he was there, he realised, actually, I'm not going to be a number nine. He said, coach, I'm finding it really hard. 
<laughs> and I replied, but it's the same players as the national team. He said, no, everything is much faster here. He came here to play in a different position from what he was used to at Valencia. He played a bit more on the wing, which wasn't easy for a goal scorer like him. It's clear that once you get to Barca, of all the great players here, you always have to demonstrate something, even if it's only small, you have to do it. That match was spectacular. It's one of the best matches that I can remember in my time at the club. Xavi and Pedro put the hosts 2-0 up in the first half. Then Villa added a third after the interval, before a moment that silenced his doubters. The key moment is Leo Messi picks the ball up in his own half, head down. Villa's mind is as quick as Messi's. He doesn't run to show where he wants the ball, he knows what Messi's going to do with the ball. The That's ball was it. played in behind. Hello, David Villa was alone, and you know the rest. That was my first El Clásico, in which I scored two goals and a 5-0 win. It brings back very fond memories. I haven't seen a player with that precision and quality with both feet from outside and inside the penalty area. He was a natural goal scorer. It was great, and I'm delighted to be part of such a famous victory. El Clasicos are always very competitive. To win by such a convincing margin is very special. Four months later, Villa would break Raúl's international record of 44 goals to become Spain's leading goalscorer. Then came his first La Liga title, yet there was still more to achieve that season. El Guaje performed really well for us at Barca. The final at Wembley also comes to mind, because he played such a key role there. It was one of the best finals against the great rival who we'd met before. It was a great day for Barcelona. We were the better side from start to finish. Even the Manchester United manager, Alex Ferguson, recognised Barcelona's superiority at the time. We scored the opener. Then they equalised. Although Rooney scored, we knew that with time, our tiki-taka football would eventually see us come out on top. If you gave him a tiny bit of space, he'd score, and that's what happened. He always needed the goal. He did everything he could to score. David, was David once again proved that the top players always show up at the key moments. I won the Champions League for the first time, which is a very difficult feat for any player. On top of that, I managed to score a goal in the final moment of the game. So it's a special match. Yet Villa endured a nightmare end to 2011 after breaking his leg in the FIFA Club World Cup. The injury ruled the 30-year-old out for the rest of the season and saw him face a race against time to make Euro 2012. He works like a hungry dog to be ready. He begins to play again, begins to train again, and then he phones Vicente Del Bosque personally to say, I'm fit, but I'm not going to be good enough for you. And he voluntarily says, pick somebody who will help you win the European Championships. That was the hardest period of my career. Of course, it was a very serious injury that meant I spent a long time on the sidelines. 
I couldn't play for eight months. Every day was tough, because I couldn't do what I'd been doing since I was a boy. I saw Carlos Puyol and David Villa on the steps during the final against Italy. And I told them to go on the pitch and enjoy the trophy celebrations with their teammates. They were part of it, but from the outside. It wasn't meant to be for David, but we always held him in high regard. Since David Villa broke his leg horrifically in the uh, Club World Cup in 2011, it was difficult to see the best David Villa. Uh, he lost pace, perhaps he lost confidence. After missing out on Spain's Euro 2012 triumph, Villa struggled at Barca. His second league title with the Catalan club in 2013 was to be his last at the Nou Camp. However, there was one final chapter left in Spain for the 31-year-old as he moved to Atletico Madrid for just over five million euros. And in his only season at the club, the striker helped Atleti win its first La Liga trophy since 1996. Atletico hadn't won the league for a long time. We had a fantastic year finishing above Barcelona and Real Madrid. So we won the league and also reached the Champions League final. Although it was tough, I'm proud that we achieved something so big in just a year. Villa added know-how, experience, bit of leadership, additional leadership. Some of his goals were crucial, but I think it was him saying, I've done this, we can do this, that was his biggest contribution to that title victory for Atleti. 2014 also saw Spain's top goal scorer retire from international football, but only after netting his 59th goal in his 97th and final match for his country. I'd always dreamed of playing for the national team, and the figures I've racked up are fantastic. It makes me very proud. Finishing and having that composure belongs to very few. He's one of them. He made the most of the team's good play. We needed someone to find the back of the net, and he was the most clinical. For Spain, it's inarguable that without Villa, they certainly wouldn't have won the World Cup in 2010, and they probably wouldn't have won Euro 2008. For a midfielder like myself, playing with David is a real privilege. The statistics throughout his career and his achievements show what a great player he is. It will definitely be difficult for anyone else to match him for the Spanish national team. After winning everything in Spain with Valencia, Barcelona and Atletico Madrid, Villa departed to America to begin a new chapter with New York City. I thought my time in the Spanish league was over back then, and from the various offers I received outside of Spain, the one that caught my eye was from New York City. It's a fantastic place, and we're very happy. The first few months were quite tough because of the language. But aside from that, and knowing that the rest of my family is a bit further away, everything else has been brilliant. It wasn't just the volume of goals he scored, but the occasions on which he scored them. From helping Spain dominate Europe and the world, to becoming the nation's greatest goal scorer, David Villa, is without doubt one of the finest strikers La Roja had ever produced. He's a top player with some phenomenal attributes, both as a footballer and a human being. Wherever he's played, he's been important for both club and country. The statistics that he has in terms of goals and assists shows you that Villa is a complete player. Spain's top goal scorer, World Cup and European winner with the national team, certainly one of the very best strikers. Dignified, articulate, friendly, family man, in my view, he's the composite of everything that makes the perfect footballer. A natural goal scorer wherever he has played. He's fantastic in the air and can use both feet. 
He's a very complete player. I think I've shown throughout my career that one of my great strengths is my ambition. Also, I'm grateful to all the people who've helped me along the way, from family to friends to all my teammates and all the coaches who've given me the chance to show what I can do on the pitch. Obviously, there's also that little bit of luck you need to be a success in such a tough profession.